Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Remember to subscribe which will keep you up to date with the channel. This is part 23 of the history of the gyroplane. In this film we look at some innovative designs that could have been game changers had they managed to come into production. The first is an interesting aircraft whose background is pure Ken Wallace. As you'll know from the series, ultimately Wallace spent half a lifetime trying to convince the military and police forces that a gyroplane could fulfil the observation and surveillance role more cheaply and as effectively as the in-service helicopter. From the initial trials of his WA-116 with the Army Air Corps in the early 60s to his collaboration with Vinton two decades later with a similar aircraft but with bodywork, 20 years of trying failed to gain real traction. The rejection was usually payload and comfort related but I also suspect the obvious nervousness in introducing into service another type. In the end, people become comfortable with what they know, and few know the gyroplane. Fast forward to 2010, and once again, a gyroplane was presented at the Farnborough Air Show, the Gyrojet Scorpion S3, a two-seat aircraft designed for the intelligent surveillance and reconnaissance market with the observer located in the front seat, the pilot in the rear. Power was provided by an Allison B-17 turboprop and fitted with centerline mounted sensors with winglet pylons for additional stores. The maximum takeoff weight was suggested at being 1,500 kilos and performance seemed quite good with a 150 knot cruise and an endurance of four hours. The police were fairly derogatory of the aircraft in their aviation newsletter, citing that technically the aircraft was unlikely to succeed because of their move away from single engine operations. I suspect the military retained the old prejudice and no doubt both organisations have lengthy procurement and decision making process. The gyrojet was the product of James Robb and Barry Jones. Both had aviation backgrounds with the British Army and redeveloped the Scorpion S3 as the BJJR Bulldog, which debuted at Friedrichshafen in 2015 and made a huge impact. It retained the tractor engine configuration, only this time power was provided by a nine-cylinder, 150-horsepower radial motor by Rotec Australia to give it a real classic look. Designed to B-car Section T, and a 560 kilo maximum all up weight. The stated aim was to sacrifice high speed in flight for the benefit of short takeoff performance, and that drove the profile of the carbon fiber rotors. The interior was also quite nicely specced with leather and wood, and pricing was suggested to be 135,000 sterling but the idea was personalisation, which would clearly add to those costs. Very sadly, it was another aircraft that wouldn't materialise, although it is suggested the aircraft is still being developed. However, Barry Jones's next project was a gyroplane that was a complete departure from the usual. This time, a level entry aircraft called the Chimera Dragon GBT-1170. The Dragon uses an airframe that's similar to a Microlite trike, powered by a two-cylinder, 80-horsepower BMW Boxer motorbike engine. The thinking being, if you swap a Microlite wing for rotors, you could deliver a gyroplane at a sensible price. And the Dragon was priced at 45,000 sterling. Another nice feature is the electric motor pre-rotator, powered by an onboard battery which pre-spins the rotor to 300 rotor RPM. But that was all in 2018 and so far nothing more has been announced. However, maybe others could take up the concept because it has the added advantage of making gyroplanes more attractive to the very large flexwing microlite community. And that really would be good business. 